A few months ago, I revealed I was going to be putting a K20 engine into my Honda S2000 shell. And in that video, my coworker Ben decided to inject his unsolicited opinion about how I should build my motor. Yeah, 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 that's um, a good base to start with. Start with the bottom end here, high compression pistons in there. You're gonna want a Type S oil pump, K20 Z3 head. This is the hot setup. Did you get some dry cartel cams in here? You could probably get like 10,000 RPM. 10,000? If you put ITBs on here, can you imagine how that would sound? Luckily, I'm my own man and I don't have to build my car the way that Ben wants. I'm going to build this engine my and way. And last but not least, we have some Kinsler 64 millimeter Ron, I... Ron. <laughs> Welcome to RS Motors. I'm Ronnie Solomon. We are building a K-Series today. Uh, this block is a K20 A2, so it's a two liter block, and we have a cylinder head from a Z3. Uh, it's gonna be an NA build. This is a street build. We're trying to get this thing to rev as high as it can, so we're doing ITVs, high compression, and a short stroke two liter. Our goal is to try and make power up to 10, 10 5 maybe, hopefully. We'll see, we'll see how the head flows and the ITV supports. The shorter stroke of the K20, that should be easier done than a longer stroke. Not that it can't be done with a K24, it's been done many times, but it's easier to spin an engine with piston speed at, at a higher RPM with a shorter stroke. High compression pistons, I believe these are 12.7 or 12.5 uh, off the shelf. High compression pistons, these are 86 mil drop-ins. Signs rods for K20 also, uh, beefy rods with ARP2000 bolts, drag curtail 0032 cam. This have proven to make good power. We've made on our Mustang dyno here around 280 on these cams with a stock port head um, and, a, and a K24, not a K20. And a set of uh, SuperTech valve springs to make sure we're not floating valves and match with our DC 3.2 cams. At 10,000 RPM, we have things moving really fast. Valve train bouncing around, you know, that we're gonna do the upgraded springs to make sure that we don't float the valves. Stronger rods, same thing to kind of hold that power down and, and make sure they don't come apart. So our first step is to get this thing completely cleaned up. It just came from uh, getting blasted, so we had to wash it, clean up all the threads. Originally, this build was going to be uh, based out of a K20 A3, but that engine's not known to have a high rev capability with the components it's got in it. So we started with uh, a base K20 A2. Next thing we're going to do is set it up on the uh, resurfacer and get the deck flat and then we'll deglaze the cylinders. For machine work, I used to kind of send them out and have other places do it. The issue comes in when you have a, a wait time. The machine shop's busy, they can't address to your stuff for another week or two, and you're now on the list of people waiting for that machine shop. So about, let's say four or five years ago, I, I bought my own machines, since I was doing my own measurements anyways, and started doing my own machines. It became more of like a one-stop shop, so I can do everything here. I have control. If something was to go wrong, the finger points on me. I uh, just did a, a thou cut just to see. This is two thou, so it's half that paper thin is, is, is a thou. I mean, this is a really good flat block already, so we'll just make a, another final pass and should be good. When we resurface these blocks, we do four points of measuring before we cut anything. Um, nothing is cut unless it's within, you know, two tenths, uh, max half a thou difference between the four corners. I want to make sure I'm only cutting the minimum amount of this block when I want to make it flat. Uh, this block came from a 2002 RSX that had a stretch chain. That I think it skipped timing and hit the valves. So the block was completely fine, but the pistons were had some valve pittings in them. 
we're not using that, so it's a perfect candidate to do what we need to do. We're adding that little chamfer in there to get the a spot for the ring to sit in. That's how it slides in. Otherwise, you have sharp edges, and the ring will just get caught if you uh, try to install it in there. We're measuring the uh, piston. See how much room we get for piston to wall clearance. They come with specs sheets when you get them, but that does, doesn't tell you exactly how big it is. Typically, these piston to wall is going to be probably three and a half thou. So one and a half paper thin. That's what you're looking at for, for oil clearance. That's your exact piston size, 85.94. Yeah, so it's not, it's, they're never exact. They tell you what it is. And then now we have to measure the block, the cylinders itself to see what piston the wall we're gonna come up with. So now we'll deglaze that cylinder. Obviously it's used, it's got some miles on it. It's been ran how many thousands of miles in RPM. You know, you got a smoother wall. Not, it's still not bad, but it's, it could, it could get better. It's gonna, it's gonna rotate and move up, up and down in a uniform um, speed. So it has the cross hatch, you know, going up and down. assembling this engine three or four times before the final assembly just to get all the measurements done. Bolt the mains on with the bearings in it, measure all the, the, the clearances between that and the crank. All right, right now we're torquing the block with the mains and bearings in it to mimic the block being assembled without the crank. And then we'll measure all the, the bores, see how big we have, and then measure the crank, and then subtract the two to get our oil clearance. So right now we're measuring the um, main bore with the bearings in it, some ACL standard bearings, and the crank journals um, to find out what the, uh, what the difference is in our oil clearance. It's, right now we're ending it to be around two and a half thou. I'm tightening the rod bolts um, at the same time I'm measuring the stretch. This, the stretch that it takes to get to the torque that I'm torquing it to. So we're torquing it to 45 and our stretch is between four and six thou. We're gonna assemble the rods with the bearings in it and measure the clearance again. So there'll be, there'll be a lot of time spent just measuring everything, make sure everything's up to spec. <laughs> These are drop-in pistons that typically get pretty good with supplying rings. Typically you'd have to set this up on here, square it up, lock the ring in place, then you zero it out, and then you start cutting. Number one at least is so good. We'll move on to the next one. A lot of the measuring stuff, you know, you can kind of see, like we haven't changed anything, but it's when you get to that one that you have to change, that's when you go, okay, I, that's why I do this. There's your stock piston and aftermarket domed. We 
right, we have here the oil expander. That's gonna go on first. Oil rails. One on top, one on the bottom. Compression ring. This is what scrapes your oil down from the sleeve back down to the bottom again and not have it come out. That guy holds the power. Hard part is done. Uh, all the measuring is done, uh, specs are done, so cleaning is done. So now it's just the easy part, it's all assembly. Yeah, spins nicely. I think we did our math right. It's working. Thrust washer clearance. And that's how much we got. Which is good. So. There's your first piston. The short block is now finished um, with the upgraded parts completely assembled. We're gonna move on to the cylinder head where we're gonna remove the valve springs, retainers, seals, and replace those with some upgraded parts we have, and then finish it off with some upgrade cams. We also are adding some ARP head studs. I think it's one of those things that you, you're, you're in there, kind of might as well upgrade it. You might be okay with a stock head stud, but you don't want to get into like later on in your build and start blowing a head gasket and go, should have done it. Like just do it now. They're, they're inexpensive, they're strong, they're known to hold. So. The cams are 032 cams. Um, this is more for like a street build, right around 280. Uh, wheel horse on our on our Mustang here um, matches uh, stock ports on the head just fine. Probably outflow the K20. We're trying to rev this thing high again, so we're, we can't use a stock oil pump. Uh, they are known to cause some cavitation. So we're gonna go with a ported oil pump to support that rev range that we're going for. K20A2 Type S oil pump. Uh, this is a modified oil pump from Four Piston, known to flow more for higher revs so it can support the oil demand for the high rev. And last but not least, we have some 64 millimeter ITVs from Kinsler. These are beautifully ported ITVs and some uh, beautiful runners on them. For the K20 and being high rev and ITVs, we're gonna sacrifice some of the low end of the car. But we've always kind of had that with even the F20 series, uh, revving to 9K. So it's, it shouldn't change the driving characteristic of the car, but should be capable of a lot more power with the K20 having the, the VVT head. 
The main build is now complete. Short blocks done, heads done with all the valve train upgrades on there. Um, we're just now prepping this for, for transport um, to get finished up and be installed in the car. So the rest of the stuff, components-wise, will be installed later. Does this motor have your stamp of approval on? Uh, yes, it does. Um, I, I'm pretty proud of this one. Every, everything's up to spec. It should fire up and run and make make some jam. I'm hoping mid 200s. We'll see what what the higher rev would do with the ITVs. Hoping hoping for a little more, but we'll see. What? <laughs> what? It's a weird noise. I don't even. I don't think I can mimic it. Give it your best shot. It's like a, it's like a carburetor noise. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> I have to hear it. My son can do it. I can't do it.